a member of the global think tank Club of Rome, Randers co-wrote The Limit of Growth in 1972, in which scholars predicted global development for the following century. In his latest book, 2052, Randers predicts that in 2040, the global population will reach a maximum of 8.1 billion people. By then, the Chinese economy will approach that of the fully developed world with an annual GDP of 34,000 US dollars per person, which will be three quarters of the US level at that time. Rangers predicts that the global economy will grow to roughly double its current size, which is slower than the general forecast. The average annual growth rate of the world economy from 1970 to 2010 was 3.5%. Render said if the same growth rate was assumed for the next 40 years, the global economy would grow to three times its current size. However, he doesn't believe this will actually occur. You predict in your book that by 2052, the world economic growth econ economy will be 2.2 times as big as today. Um, it is a little bit slower than the general forecast based on the past GDP growth. Um, so do you think this slower GDP growth will give us more time to shift toward a more rational economy? Uh, in my forecast for the next 40 years, uh, I expect very low economic growth in the rich world. The reason is not that the rich world would like to stabilize. The reason is that the labor force in the rich world will be going down and the, number, the productivity growth will not uh, be achieved. And so they will move sideways. China will come up very fast. Some other emerging economies will come up fast. But the sum total of this is much lower economic growth rates over the next 40 years compared to the last 40 years. The, the sad point is that this slower growth rate leaves more people poor in 2050. The good thing is that it gives us more time to solve the resource and pollution constraints of the planet. And many Asians, and some, including Chinese people, aspire to this middle class or upper class American lifestyles. But the truth is the world resources are so limited that it's just impossible for all nations to achieve that kind of standard. And so what would you like to tell the Asians or the Ch Chinese who are thinking that way? It is true yeah. that the world is too small to keep 10 billion people at an American middle class level. But that there is the good news that there will not be in 2050 10 billion rich people. First of all, the world population is going to peak and start to decline so that there will only be 8 billion people in 2050 and going downwards. And secondly, sad for those who are involved, most of those or many of those people will be poor because other countries will not be able to follow to post-industrial economy. Many other countries will try, but they will not succeed because they will not be able to get a strong government in place, which in my mind is unnecessary. And so in 2050, there will only be three to four billion people who are middle class and the world has enough resources to make the world uh, livable, you know, with that kind of load. Over the past three decades, China has dazzled the world with its economic growth and risen to become a major global player. With its new leadership coming into office, sustainable growth and more efficient governance will be more important than ever. And now we're also calling for more government or administrative reforms. And do you have any advice for that? One of the other uh, things I'm involved in in a project with your government is to try to develop new indicators to try to guide uh, future development of uh, China, which is systematic measurement of the grievances of the people. So basically systematically ask people, you know, how serious do you think the environmental problem is? How corrupt are the local officials? You know, etc., etc. And and feed this back into the policy process so that the central government can assess the intensity of uh, the unhappiness with these obvious problems that everyone exists, 
uh, everyone knows that exists. Just to make that indicator yes. more clearer. Make the indicators clear, publish the indicators all the time so that everyone knows what is the actual situation. One of the priorities in China's latest five-year plan between 2011 and 2015 are the, um, the sustainable development, the uh, industrial upgrading and the boosting domestic consumption. Yes. What do you think of these priorities? I was very happy that these long-term ideas of energy efficiency and now uh, environmental protection and peaceful coexistence between man and nature, you know, emerging in strength in the five-year plans. How should the Chinese government balance between the roles of promoting economic growth, environmental protection? So the, the real challenge is to balance between income growth and environmental protection. So when you boost environmental protection, this is the same as slowing down income growth. Yeah. You know, you have to use labor and capital to clean the water instead of using labor and capital to increase uh, more consumption use. Uh, in my mind, uh, one should at this point in time be responsive to the demands of that part of Chinese society which requires cleaner air you know, and increase you know, the, the effort in those sectors for a couple of decades while you solve that problem. Still, there is enough resources and capacity in, the, in China <coughs> to help the poor. What should be deeper, deprioritized, is of course making the rich Chinese even richer. That is not a particularly important priority in my mind.